For me, the act of creation is in the instant that I press the button. It's all about uh, light and structure and texture. My inspirations are people from the 20s and 30s and 40s, people like Bill Brandt and Edward Weston, and it's described as straight photography. Straight photography is where you don't use any manipulation, and it's very much between your eye and the moment. You know, I don't rely on flash or filters or, or any kind of trickery, and I don't use any subsequent manipulation uh, on Adobe Photoshop or what have you. It's that moment, it's waiting maybe up to six or seven hours, or just seeing something within two minutes and grabbing it. But it's capturing something rather than manipulating and creating it. Cartier-Bresson always talked about the defining moment. For me, it's usually the defining angle or the defining light or texture. I always use natural light uh, or available light, whatever happens to be, whether it's the moon or, or a passing car's headlamp. But it's choosing that particular moment when the light is perfect. The books are, are an entirely different discipline in that whenever one takes a photograph, obviously it's just one specific image. But in a book, you've got two or three hundred pictures that have all got to work together and tell a story. The work of mine that works best, I think, is, is the abstract textures, things like rocks and, and stones and trees and, and mud and water. I am drawn again and again to those things, elemental, earthy things. And even in the most abstract terms, when you've got a, a macro, extreme close-up shot of a texture, within the tree bark or the rock or the log or whatever I'm photographing, there will be certain very, very strong shapes. One commission is for a city law firm, uh, and they wanted abstract details of, of the city, the region around the financial district in London. And that was a great brief, because I'm often in Cambodia or Peru or Ghana. I decided to shoot quite a lot of them at night, uh, which made the buildings look more eerie and, and more interesting. One of my favourite pictures, and the one they decided to, to make very large and put in their reception, I was at the National Theatre. And from the end of Waterloo Bridge, you've got this wonderful angle with all these lines of the concrete. And as a picture, I think it worked very well. As a, I think a very beautiful image. Uh, finding the right angle was incredibly satisfying. They've now commissioned a further eight pictures for a conference room. And I've decided to do this more organically and to find uh, plants and trees within the city, but doing it within the same style so it flows through the building. I work in colour simply because I see the world in colour. I think black and white, you're instantly removed from reality and, and it almost becomes art straight away by nature of the medium. And with colour, because everybody photographs in colour themselves and because they've seen so many newspapers and magazines, you're really challenging yourself to create an angle or, or capture light that they simply haven't seen before. I used to sculpt and what got me into two-dimensional art was partly the paintings of Georgia O'Keeffe. And it was a real shock, a thrill, to see what was possible in two dimensions with bold use of colour in a very, very, very tight structure. The pictures of mine that work best, I get exactly the same kick out of looking through the books of my heroes, like Bill Brown or Edward Weston. There's sometimes such a tight structure that the eye is literally led all around the picture. And it doesn't sit on one, one object but it moves around the picture and, and keeps the brain excited. And I think that's when the work works at its best.